ایکسٹریملی and uh, he would certainly be looking forward to carrying the national flag at the Olympics as well. Uh, he has secured his uh, place in the Paris Olympics, and it's going to be interesting to see Pakistan in this event as well, because obviously when you talk about a lot of talent and a lot of opportunities in the Olympics, Pakistan's participation is something that has also lacked in numbers. So I think it's great that we have yet another sport where Pakistan would be represented at the Paris Olympics. So congratulations to Usman, his team, everybody involved. And congratulations to Pakistan. After that, we move on to some exciting news where the fifth Ashes test is underway. Australia is absolutely cruising. They're 160 runs away now from victory. This would be yet another highest chase in Ashes history. Steve Smith is at the crease. He's uh, batting uh, brilliantly so far. England have found uh, their share of happiness uh, on, on different parts of the occasion. But the big news is that Stuart Broad has retired from international cricket. And that is something that uh, was shocking for some because some had not expected this. This is Stuart Broad's last test match in English colours and he would definitely uh, be uh, saying goodbye to his career on a high. He had a word with uh, a lot of these gentlemen involved with cricket. Even Jimmy Anderson said that he was shocked initially. Ben Stokes said that he had understood the situation. And Stuart Broad himself said that, you know, I was not 50-50, but I was still thinking about the decision till 8.30 last night. But, uh, you know, I, I made my decision. He batted for the last time yesterday came out, scored eight runs out of eight, delivery smashed a six as well. Uh, and of course, uh, when you talk about bowling today, he takes the field for the very last time. So I think a memorable career for Stuart Broad, but then again, this has been an exciting ashes and only time will tell uh, how it paves way because obviously England uh, have tried their best. Sometimes the weather has got the better of them and now Australia is as resilient as ever. They've lost three wickets, but they're still 160 runs away. A short break, we'll be right back with the details. Stay tuned. Welcome back and now discussing things in detail in studios. We've been joined by sports expert Ali Mehdi. Assalamu alaikum Ali, how are you? Walaikum salam and very well. Well, as somebody who's watched the history of the Ashes and, you know, has seen the Ashes uh, become what it has over the years and this evolution of cricket, uh, I know it's the final day, it's the final test. Now we'll talk about that in a bit, but what do you make of this overall Ashes series this time? I think it's been a fantastic series. You go back to the past 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, since I've been following it since 1997, I think it's been, a, been one of the better ones. You can talk about 2005 to, you know, with probably the greatest Ashes series of all time. I thought 2019 was a great spectacle when Australia, for the first time, you know, this century actually managed to retain the Ashes. But this time has been actually a bit special because this is the first time that, you know, you have a lot of legends. You have the, uh, the English team have had a lot of players who are above 30. The average age is very high too. And, you know, there's a new formula which has come in the form of baseball too. So it's been very interesting. But, you know, if you look at the whole Ashes series, series mm, I mean uh, the people will say the scoreline hasn't done justice but the most important thing Ahmed if you look over here is while it's been even e even a keel for, for both teams Australia is the one which has actually won the more important sessions they are the ones who are ahead and the reason they are ahead because they won the important they've actually just edged out of uh, uh, England and for that matter you know they have a very good chance of winning for the Ashes for the first time in 22 years. Where did it all go wrong for England? I mean we'll talk about the weather in a bit and what Manchester did to them but the first two test matches were there to win. Look, I think they're they've made some really, really uh, catastrophic errors, and I think that goes down to the first day of the first test. I mean, how they could declare on the first day, I still can't get over that. And then in the second innings, let a uh, second test match, let's not forget, when, you know, when we had uh, at the end of June, you know, they were coasting when they were chasing, um, when they were chasing uh, Australia's total about 400, and then you know they just capitulated and gave Australia that huge lead. It was too difficult for them at the end. You know, uh, Ben Stokes actually had that uh, blistering knock at the end of the day but it just left them the most important thing is that they've lost those important sessions you know they are when there's a uh, two t t uh, teams which are so 
close to each other. If it comes down to those important sessions, it comes down to the fact that whether you can win those important sessions. Unfortunately, England haven't won those. And then you have to also go back to the fact that you know in the Ma Manchester Test too, weather hasn't played part. So until now, I think the most important thing, the reason why England haven't won this and are not ahead and are on danger of winning of losing the series and losing the series for the first time in 22 years comes down to two things. It comes down to the fact that they lost the most important sessions in all the test matches except the third and the fourth. And the most impo uh, the other thing is that weather really hasn't helped them, especially Manchester. Uh, there, there are so many things I want to talk about, but you know my focus goes to uh, Stuart Broad. Uh, 166 test matches for England, 600 wickets. Uh, I, I, I would say very useful, more than 3,000 runs. Uh, a guy who still said that his body's feeling great, he's enjoying every bit, he could still go on, but this is where he feels it's time uh, to say goodbye. What does this mean for Broad himself and for the world of cricket? Look, for Broad, this uh, this comes as no surprise to me. He recently had a baby daughter with his uh, spouse-to-be. And uh, for that reason, he actually decided that, you know, that the fact of the matter is now that England aren't going to play, let's not forget, England are not going to play test cricket for another five months. And they'll be playing their next test match at the end of January. So that, for that matter, you know, he had a lot of, things to actually scale out, had, had a lot of things to weigh in. And for that matter, he thought it's the best way to go. Look, it comes down to some cricketers, whilst they're feeling extremely great, do they want to end up on a high or end on a low? For Stuart Broad, it was all about ending on a high, and what better place than Ashes cricket too. I must say, I was taken a bit surprised over here, but at the end of the day, Stuart Broad has been a brilliant uh, servant for English cricket too. I mean, somebody who actually started out way back in 2006 in white ball. He, let's not forget, he was a white ball specialist. And then he actually transformed his game into, uh, translated it into um, uh, red ball cricket. You know, he's had m many, many uh, successful stints with the red ball. 2009 uh, uh, Ashes in Oval, when he went and helped uh, England win the Ashes in 2009. 2013, who can forget that incredible spell at Durham? And then the big one was at Nottingham in Tread Bridge at 2015, when he got eight for 15 too. So he's, he will live down in Ashes folklore too. But the most important thing is that he, for himself, is going on his own terms. So at this point for England really made headlines, didn't they? Because even like Jimmy Anderson said, it was shocking for him when he heard that Broad's made his decision. Well, you know, I was actually, it's interesting that you mentioned that, but I was actually s watching the statistic, Ahmed, that, uh, I mean, there must be about 12 legendary cricketers from England who've actually retired since uh, James Anderson came into the four. I remember his way, uh, uh, this, when he came in, he made uh, his debut way back in 2003. You've had legendary cr cr cricketers who have retired since then. You talk about the likes of Strauss, Peterson, you know, Matt Pryor. I mean, so many, uh, Alistair Cook is another one for that matter. So Ian many Bell. Ian Bell. Bell is another one. Jonathan Trott. Jonathan Trott. The list goes on. But the fact of the matter, he's losing his best buddy over there. And the one person who's been with him for the past 16 years is actually leaving too. So he's actually, f I'm sure deep down he's actually pretty hurt. But, but the fact of the matter, he's still part of a very good squad. The interesting thing is how much motivation does uh, this uh, James Anderson have left? Because he's losing uh, this uh, Stuart Broad, you know, his, you could say his one, his one of his real comrades over there. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes about, especially when their next series in England, in India, in end of January. Well, Australia have really taken the attack to them because they expected to take these early wickets, but nothing worked today. Nothing worked today. I thought, you know, the first, if you look at the first session, you know, up till, uh, up till T, I mean, there was a delayed start too, but the ball was actually hooping around. It was actually jumping around too, swinging, seeming and everything. And um, I thought the fact that Wokes and um, uh, Wood actually were bowling extremely well. Wokes came and got dislodged the two openers with two brilliant balls too. Wood came to the party and he actually got rid of a uh, lubbish in then, then too. But, you know, the important thing is that after that, you know, that uh, the likes of Smith and uh, Smith and uh, this uh, head have actually laid the down the foundation and are playing very attacking cricket. The, w the wicket has slightly gotten easier to bat on, and at the same time, too, the ball has slightly gotten older. It's about 60 overs, too. So I think Wood, uh, the, the fact that Smith and Head are playing the right cricket, they're playing positive cricket, they're attacking the, bo the ball to playing attacking shots. But the important thing is that now that you could say there's a momentum switch towards England, towards Australia, too. And England need to find wickets, otherwise, it's going to be a 3 win 1 mm -hmm. victory to Australia. Definitely. Now discussing this further, we've been joined uh, by cricket commentator, broadcaster, presenter and our cricket expert these days. He's very busy, we know that, but we finally get a hold of him every time we can. K. Asif Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmed. I'm very well and I hope you guys are doing well.
as well. Ashish, what would you like to tell us uh, as far as the Ashes is concerned? Australia look to be cruising. They're now 147 runs away from victory, and it looks like they're a side that can do that. But even the bigger news from English cricket has been the retirement of Stuart Broad. Well, you know that everyone is uh, talking about the Stuart Broad stuff. Uh, Retirement, and to be very honest, that uh, the way he has uh, served England has been really, really amazing. And uh, um, uh, I would love to watch her bowling again and again. And even you know that uh, the way he was uh, uh, accompanying with James Anderson, that was amazing. So, uh, but that was the right time. He was uh, performing so well, and uh, he was on his peak. I think he has decided well. That is the case, definitely. But uh, Asif, uh, overall, his career, 600 plus wickets, and you know, he made a very pertinent comment. He said that my body's feeling great. I'm enjoying. I'm in rhythm. I could still go on and on, but I feel that this is the time where I should just say bye. See that now he is giving space to the youngster, to the other uh, players like Chris Wokes, Chris Wood, the way they are uh, performing their team for their team. So this is a right approach, and uh, we have spoken a lot about this that the English players, their, uh, 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 their approach towards retirement, it, it's really nice. And you know that uh, uh, it, it has to be learned from the other, for, for other players as well, that the, if they're on their peak and they're just leaving the, 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 their space for the other players, I think phenomenal. You cannot play cricket for uh, only 45, 46 years of age. You know that it happens only in Pakistan. A funny thing, Asif, people were expecting Jimmy Anderson. It came the other way around. <laughs> well, this is funny, you know, and, and and I've seen on Twitter as well that the people are talking about. But see, if Jimmy Anderson wants to continue. This is his choice. And uh, if you talk about his uh, form, if you talk about his uh, personality, if you talk about his confidence, his physique, each and everything is supporting him. So I think that he's uh, definitely um, in, uh, independent in his decision. Well, my final a very quick question to you is that apart from the Shinwari that you're enjoying, how is Kabul treating you? How's the competition there? Uh, well, that's the, the, the you know, uh, if you talk about Kabul, each and everything is really perfect. And right now, this is the second qualifier. And uh, we are heading towards final now. I, I have seen amazing talent here this, uh, and in Kabul that the, the players are uh, really talented. If you talk about their fast bowlers, you can see in next couple of years that the Afghanistan could bring some sheer talent in fast bowling department as well. Definitely. Asif, thank you very much for joining us on Sports Extra. That was K. Asif, our cricket expert, talking to us regarding Stuart Broad's retirement and the Ashes overall. Uh, Ali Mehdi, I, I know that we've seen many Australian yeah, sides uh, you know, growing up, and we've seen the greatest Australian side as well who won us uh, three World Cups. We saw that as well. Uh, but the fact is, overall, they've enjoyed a good Ashes history as well. We've seen the greats, Ricky Ponting, Michael Clark, Adam Gilchrist, Matthew Hayden, Glenn McGraw, Shane Warne. We can go on and on. But this unit under Pat Cummins has certainly become something invincible. Look, the reason we've become invincible is because they play very well as a team. They trust their captain too. You can't compare. You know, I was seeing this really, really odd statistic uh, how you would compare this team to 2005. I mean, the 2005 team, hands down, is a million times better. No disrespect to this team, but the, than the one, uh, you know, uh, which is incumbent and, you know, currently playing too. But the thing with this team is they play as a team together. They trust their captain. The chemistry is excellent too. And the fact of the matter is that throughout the series, and, you know, you, if you you look at uh, the ever since uh, Pat Cummins took play, took over in the last Ashes Down Under. The thing, um, important thing, was over there that all their players during certain segments of the series or certain Test matches have actually performed very well, and that's the most important thing too. They trust their captain. Uh, all players have contributed to, and the fact of the matter, if you look at their 11, I mean, more or less the 11 team is the same. The only one change, they have had a uniform team for the past one and a half to two years. How can you say, that it's not very often that that happens. The only change, you know, which has really come is in their bowling, uh, Emmett, and that is when actually Boland would come in for Hazelwood or for Stark for that matter. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you look at the team, nine or 10 of the players out of the 11 players have exactly been the same team. Yeah, so but if yeah, Nathan Lyon played 100 tests. Yeah, I mean, Nathan 
Nathan Lyon, I mean, he's a big loss too. Mm. But for that matter, majority of their players have always have been consistent and have been playing regularly too. So that makes a big difference. You trust if you trust your captain and your captain can trust your uh, the, the, your fellow players, then that makes a world of a difference. Definitely does. Now joining us on Sports Extra, Sports Expert Ali Abbas. Ali, what would you like to say regarding the Ashes so far? I know Australia uh, are cruising; they're all set to victory. Uh, but it's been a very, very difficult Ashes as far as England is concerned. Sometimes their strategy, sometimes the weather. And then, of course, coming into this last Test match, they're finding it very hard to rattle the stumps. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble uh, hearing Ali Abbas. We'll get that sorted. Uh, Ali Mehdi... Uh, Captaincy is something that, like you talked about, uh, it is not often that you see a fast bowler as an Australian skipper. Going through history as well, we've seen some great batters uh, taking the reins of skipper for Team Australia. And uh, let's be very honest, Pat Cummins got the job at a very, very difficult time. Because there was a lot of controversy surrounding Australian cricket at that time. There was a lot of um, uh, controversy, and let's not forget that he b he took actually the reins actually after you know the the scandal of uh, Tim Payne actually who had to give up the captaincy because of controversial reasons, and then after that let's not forget uh, Justin Langer had to actually wasn't able to take part. I mean he actually decided also that he doesn't wa he was also removed from the job too. So there were these are very very difficult times for Australia, but you have to uh, give a lot of credit to Pat Cummins because he steadied the ship. He after that, you know, after winning the uh, Ashes in Australia, he came to Pakistan and won one nil over here, and then ever since then, then went to Sri Lanka in a difficult series over there, drew one one two World Test Championship, did extremely well too. I mean, uh, they did extremely well down under too, and then now you can see in the Ashes they're about to win a historic series three one two. So I think he done. I don't think he, uh, Ahmed, he gets the credit he deserves because he's done very well. The fact of the matter, he has a very good team under him, but the fact of the matter, he's actually led his troops very well. And the most important thing, like I said earlier, is his troops trust him too. If your tr uh, team uh, players uh, trust you too, then you're bound to do extremely well. Definitely. Ali Awaz joins us again. Ali, uh, it's been a difficult Ashes for England. Sometimes their strategy hasn't worked. Sometimes the weather's not been on their side. Even if you talk about today, they're finding it very, very hard to go through the Australian middle order. Yeah, I think, uh, can you hear me, Amit? Can you hear me fine now? Yeah, yes, I can, can Amit, please, go ahead. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, no, I, I agree with you. I think, uh, this time, uh, you know, uh, the baseball method of playing cricket is still relatively new. And if there's one statement that every uh, person who, was, who had some knowledge of cricket was uh, throwing around, it was that England are going to be found out. What happened in the series was that England weren't found out. England managed to come back from 2 0 down, you know, coming close to drawing the series 2 2. So there's a method to this madness. And I think Ben Stokes and Brendan McCallum have been able to prove that this series. And if they are able to win this test match and end the series 2 2, I think it'll go, it is going to be a huge statement. I think they have been at the uh, the poor end of luck as well throughout the series, even though I think the ball changed today. <laughs> it's something that they cannot complain a lot, a lot about because if the shoe was on the other foot, I'm sure Nasir Hussain and Michael Atherton would have been going about it in the commentary box. So they've had some luck today, but generally I think uh, this series was deemed to be the end of baseball and England being found out. I think it isn't anything but England being found out from the likes of uh, Zach Crawley, you know, uh, ending up as maybe 10 runs short of Usman Khawaja as the top run scorer of this Asher series to how Stuart Broad has performed, Mark Wood, Chris Wokes. There's so many examples for England to continue with this method and try to find their way into the final of the World Test Championship. So if you look at it from a broader context and not in terms of how this series has uh, played out, I think England do come out as... Uh, uh, if, if this match does end up with England winning, I think they do come out victorious. And by the end of the day, it's going to take two or three years for us to decide how we look at the legacy of baseball. And currently, I think Ben Stokes and Brendan McCallum have done nothing wrong. They've been great. The viewership of the Ashes has been through the roof. The interest of the fans for this particular test series has been amazing. Full houses all over England. So this series has been a huge success on and off the field. The weather played its part uh, in the last test match, which is really unfortunate that Old Trafford test match was going to be amazing had it gone through and there was a result, but it wasn't, and that is England, right? You have to get used to it. But generally, I think it's it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, may it be Pat Cummins, Ben Stokes, Brendan McCallum. The Australian units that we're talking about, and we just, you know, were of the opinion that, uh, remember, Pat Cummins got captaincy at a very difficult time for Australia. They just recovered 
uh, from that sandpaper controversy and then immediately came Tim Payne's scandal. Uh, he had to let go of the captaincy and was axed from cricket almost. And then uh, if you talk about Pat Cummins, he got this opportunity at a very difficult time to keep the team together. Yeah, I think Australian cricket has gone through two transitions. They went from being bad boys uh, of the sandpaper scandal to Tim Payne leading the team and you know, introducing new things like shaking hands before the match. So they went from the bad boys, the bullish Australians to the good Australians. And then, you know, Pat Cummins, he bought some of that balance back. Because by the end of the day, the Australian way is to win. They're not too much concerned about the spirit of cricket, right? And you saw that with that Alex Carey run out. So I think Pat Cummins bought a bit of uh, that ruthless aggression back into the Australians, which is missing. And I think the biggest example of uh, that method of Tim Payne, which was failing, was that loss to India at the GABA. It was unthinkable that Australia would do that, but they did the loss to India. And it was because they were just not bullish enough. These same players under Pat Cummins have a lot more grit and a lot more hustle about them. And they're really, really dangerous to play against. So I think it was important to bring back. Like, I know it's not nice to uh, glorify bullying, but by the end of the day, that was one of the tactics which the Australians used really well to dominate in the early 2000s and the late 1990s. So it's nice to see a bit of that back. And, you know, it, uh, there's a lot of good stuff happening in cricket. At times, you need a bit of the controversy. And what better to have a controversy with the Australians involved, smiling, winning, and giving it their all against the opposition. Ali Mary, which Australian team do you like, as Ali Abbas mentioned? Australian teams over the years? Yes. Uh, I mean, the way he mentions it, that there's one nice Australia that we saw under Tim Payne, and now Australians are back to their merry way of aggressive cricket. Look, the, the thing with the Australian team I like, Ali Abbas just mentioned, is that they don't really care about the spirit of the game. Their the formula is just to win. They will do anything to win. That's why they have five World Cups under their win. They have the World Test Championship winners. They won the World T22. They don't really care about the spirit of the game. Whatever it says, you know, whatever sort of controversies, you know, we've seen that with Australia over the years too. You know, they want to play aggressive cricket. They want to win, and that's exactly wha what they want to do. If you look at the 2019 uh, team compared to this one, I think this one is more complete because they have a much better team. I mean, they have an excellent core and at the end of the day, they have a very good captain. And the most important thing is over there that, you know, I think another thing which has actually really worked for Australia, we've s the whole media, the whole global media has spoken non-stop about baseball, baseball, baseball. I mean, even I'm getting sick of it too. The fact of the matter is because they've gone under their radar too, they've gone about their business and they, what they've done is that since the pressures on England, they haven't won the uh, Ashes in England since 2015 too. There's much more pressure on England. And that's why I feel England are more under pressure than Australia too. And they've done about their business. And, you know, if all, go, if all goes smoothly for them, they're going to win this 3-1. Three, three and who would have thought? Th that opens up a very uh, huge argument now. Because probably, like Stuart Broad has said, this is, he's done now. Yeah. Uh, probably. Uh, Moin Ali, I don't think he's going to make a comeback to no. test cricket. This would probably be it. Uh, England's now got to look at two to three things eventually. One, they've got to go back to uh, the mantra of pace because uh, Mark Wood has really opened up that debate and, you know, with something that Jofra Archer was meant to be and then injury came in, really hampered England's spirits as well. And then, of course, finding a quality off spinner all over again. Yeah, but the thing with England over here is now that Stuart Broad is over good, they're going to have to look look at their plethora of options. They've got a lot of players. Let's not forget Josh Tung. I thought he played a very good in the second test match too. Mm -hmm. Got those two important wickets too. So he's one for the future too. Ollie Robinson is over there too. They have a lot of uh, a conveyor belt of talent coming through the counties too. So it's not like they don't have talent. You know, they actually have to see which is the best sort of team, which are the best players which can actually help you win series abroad, which can help you win series at home. How they can actually get to a World Test Championship final, which at this moment is looking very difficult. They have to go to Austria, England, India. They have to play five test matches over there. Then, you know, they have the home series too. So, you know, the main goal over there is two things for English, uh, for England, is to, uh, to qualify for a World Test Championship final, but more importantly, to win in Ashes. And uh, if they don't change their philosophy too, then I do think that they're going to struggle too. And one thing I really want to put about over here is that I think that this baseball has actually come to haunt them too. And the reason I say that, I think it's a very important point, and I was seeing that online, is that, you know, with baseball, you're making fast runs, you're playing very aggressively, too aggressive. What it does is that, you know, that when you actually have to come to bowl, Australia have actually consumed 
twice the number of overs than when England were actually batting too. So that can actually work against them too. England, are so Australia are just going about their business, you know, just going at a decent run rate, mm -hmm. not losing wickets. And, you know, more energy has been consumed to England too. So and I right now, Ali Mehdi, uh, uh, lunch uh, has been taken. They're 238 for three. In 70 overs, they need an another 146, which would be a walk in the park. Well, walk in the park too. Two runs per over too. And, mm -hmm. and I actually uh, checked the, uh, the Met department. Yeah, I the checked weather. the uh, for weather forecast. Mm -hmm. And it's not probably going to rain. If that's the case, this is a stroll in the park for Australia. And who would have thought that they're going to win 3-1? So I just feel that England have overcooked it too much. And for <laughs> that reason, you know, there's a very good chance that Australia could win 3-1, which would be very, very, very damning for the Ali English cricket team. Ali, Ali, Ali Abbas, uh, 238 for three. Uh, of course, 140. 46 at lunch. Uh, we'll talk about that right after this short break. Stay tuned. Well, welcome back to Sports Extra. And just before the stroke of lunch, there was another controversy surrounding Steve Smith's dismissal. This time he was taken at the leg slip uh, with a caught, uh, you know, just a glove and a pad and this uppish catch taken by Ben Stokes, but during celebration just put it down and then they reviewed it and then the third umpire said that not out because eventually the catch was not taken cleanly. So you can never have English cricket without controversy, Ali Mehdi, can you? You can never have and that's why I say that, that you know, you have to take, you know, we had a moment this uh, early on, I think Mitchell Stark in the uh, Lord's Test match, he didn't take the wicker ball clearly and you know, he grounded it too and then you know, history repeats itself <laughs> over here. So you know, this is the thing with Ashes cricket, there's always controversy, mm -hmm. uh, there's always something happening and I think until the last ball and until this test mm -hmm. match doesn't finish, we are in for some more uh, Absolutely. Uh, Ali Abbas, controversy surrounding yet another dismissal in this ashes it's given not out this time uh, but at the stroke of lunch Australia really look to be in a commanding position your final thoughts on the ashes yeah yeah uh, I mean Ben Stokes not celebrating Ben Stokes not celebrating gave it again but uh, my final thoughts on the ashes are pretty simple I think a lot of people have been cherry picking in terms of how baseball has been a failure baseball is a revolution in test cricket we might not see it now but five years down the road this is how every team is going to play so for me Ben Stokes is a visionary he's a legend he has started a legacy for himself that is going to be looked back on 10 years down the road as something which totally changed Test cricket. I, I am pretty confident England are going to win this match. It's not going to be easy scoring 150 runs on this pitch with there's so many rough marks. And let's not forget that the new ball is also due in another 10 overs with the English bowlers uh, being relatively well rested. So, I mean, I, I know Ali Mehdi wants Australia to win, but I think we're going to be having this discussion tomorrow over a 2-2 series rather than a 3-1 series. And then we'll talk about baseball once again. Me and Ali Mehdi have been with England since day one. Yeah. But when you talk about revolution of cricket, the only revolution I'll see is when Jose Mourinho comes and takes up the English coaching department. <laughs> I'll believe that's a revolution <laughs> in world <laughs> cricket. Uh, but, 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 you know, it could go either way after the stroke of lunch. But this is a, a very crucial point that the new ball is something that England tend to utilize very well. And, you know, you want to make it a fairy tale test match for Stuart Broad to say goodbye on. So I think that anything could happen. Maybe the fate. Uh, is, is on their side as well. Uh, we'll discuss obviously this further as far as the results go, but after lunch it's going to be very interesting. Uh, now we take you towards football, where pre-season fixtures have been very, very interesting. Manchester United were beaten by Borussia Dortmund 3-2, Barcelona thrashed Real Madrid 3-0, and Chelsea uh, had uh, got the Summer Series trophy on their side as well. Uh, Ali, many interesting things, apart from the transfers and everything happening, there's been some interesting games as well. No, interesting games too, and it's good. Look, uh, you know, you, one can never take uh, pre-seasons uh, uh, seriously too, because this is just like a workout mm -hmm. for them. This is just fitness for them, you know, ju for just for managers to see the strength of their squads too. And as you can see right now, where the likes of Manchester United, the likes of uh, this Arsenal also, uh, Barcelona, you know, they're all getting matches too. So results don't make much of a difference. It just comes down to performance, and it comes down to actually the fact of the how fit these players are so you know the season just starts in about one uh, in about two weeks time so uh, the managers of all these football uh, you know these great football clubs will be able to see be able to see that which sort of players do they need to strengthen their squads or not and you know how much they're ready for the new season absolutely uh, Ali Abbas a lot of uh, thought is going into some of these squads as well and like I said apart from the transfer news it's some good practice that these sides have been getting yeah, a good practice in obviously conditions which are not going to be similar to once the season starts. But it's nice to see most of the teams getting to uh, have glimpses of the new talent. 
I still do believe that there is a lot of transfer business still to be taken place, but at the moment, a lot of clubs would be satisfied where they are. One of them being Arsenal. I think they've had a fantastic transfer window. Manchester United, on the other hand, have been pretty busy. So you know, but like Ali Mehdi mentioned, I think he just put it perfectly. In another couple of years, things will a uh, couple of weeks, things will start making sense. And yeah, uh, don't see Jose Mourinho joining England as per your wishes. But other than that, we might see a lot of uh, things coming up. And looking forward to the season ahead. Liverpool winning the league and United getting relegated. <laughs> I I can only say dream on kid but uh, thank you very much Ali Abbas and Ali Mehdi thank you very much to you as well for joining us on Sports Extra uh, it's been interesting but that wraps it up from me and the entire team it's goodbye for now